Today I'm going to show you how I make jacket potatoes, or you may call these baked potatoes. I'm topping it with homemade turkey chili and cheese. This is going to be good. I'm working with four large russet potatoes that I've already rinsed and washed well. So typically when I'm baking potatoes, I leave them on a baking sheet after rinsing them, and I just prick them with a fork and bake at 400 degrees Fahrenheit for an hour or so. But for these today, I'm going to score them with an X. And actually already with this first one, I went straight down. Typically you want to go like into an X pattern, like diagonally. It'll all work. So just carefully score the top. And you kind of want to cut into it, not too deep. And just repeat the process for the rest of them. Some of you might be wondering why I'm calling it jacket potatoes and not baked potatoes, which like I said earlier, it's a baked potato. But specifically, this is something my husband ate when he lived in Bournemouth, which is a city in South England. And the toppings he used to use would be baked beans. He'd just add butter, salt, and pepper to the jacket potato and add baked beans, sometimes with cheese. And it was quite easy and economical for him to make that when he lived there when he was younger. So I decided to put my own spin on it and do homemade chili, which is what I like to make here at home. And I was recently on TikTok and somehow I ended up on the jacket potato side of TikTok. The algorithm just kind of kept putting that on my For You page. So I had to make these. So here we are. So I've scored all of them. They are completely rinsed. So now what I'm going to do is drizzle olive oil to the exterior of the potatoes and just kind of rub that in all over the exterior. And then I'm going to take salt and just salt the exterior. And that's it. And my husband said that sometimes he would do this in the microwave as well, but I like to bake these in the oven because the exterior does come out nice and crisp when you do it this way. So to bake these, you can definitely leave them on a baking sheet just like this. But what I'm going to do is place them right on the oven rack, which is typical for a jacket potato. So once you have them oiled and salted, bake them at 400 degrees Fahrenheit for about an hour or until they are cooked through. Now I'm going to show you how I make the turkey chili. So here's the ground turkey meat that I'm going to just take out of the packages. But I want to show you the logic of why I decided chili. <laughs> so this is why I'm going to do ground turkey chili. Because I came into my pantry looking around and I saw charro beans, a can of charro pinto beans. And then I saw the beef broth. I'm going to toss in the chicken broth as well. And the Rotel diced tomatoes and green chilies. For whatever reason, when I saw this, I just thought chili. So that's what we're having today. Preheated pot. I'm adding a little bit of oil, cooking oil. And I'm going in with my turkey meat. Break that apart. And I'm going quick with this. You can do, you know, fresh onion and brown it before adding the meat. There's so many techniques to add depth of flavor. We're just going for quick and convenient. <laughs> I have like a tablespoon of the dehydrated chopped onion. I'll go with a teaspoon and a half of garlic powder. Get that going. Going in with salt. I'll do like a I'll do a teaspoon of salt to start with. Towards the end, you'll always want to season and salt to taste after you pretty much have it done, just to adjust the, the salt ratio in the dish or whatever it is you're cooking. Ground cumin. A lot of the ratios of the dried seasonings and spices are to your preference. I'll go with like a teaspoon and a half. Okay, chili powder. I'm gonna go with one. Start with, I'm doing two and a half tablespoons. You know, again, it's to your preference. Okay, I'm gonna let this cook. I'm also gonna add some smoked paprika um, into the mix. I like mm, a teaspoon and a half, the smoky flavor along with the chili powder. The fancy light chili powder is what it's called. So it's a blend, it's not spicy. For those of you that are curious, it's not a spicy blend. 
Okay, so I want to point this out. When I'm cooking, like, with poultry or chicken, you know, any type of poultry, this is ground turkey meat, I switch out the spoon once it's cooked. So this is the new spoon. I'm going to thicken my chili with um, instant corn flour for masa. Maseca brand, if you've got that, I usually use that, but I'm going with the, the, the PAN pan brand today because it's what I have. And I'm going with like maybe a quarter cup. I think that'll thicken it quite nicely. And just work that into the ground turkey. By the way, you can definitely switch the ground turkey for ground beef in this recipe. Going in with the rotel. Essentially, it's just diced chopped tomato and green chilies. Going with my broths, going in with my beef broth. I'm going to use like half the can of the chicken broth. Yeah, just a little bit. I think maybe just one can would have been fine. If I need more, I'll add more. But now, give that a good mix. I drained the uh, can of charro beans that I had going in. I failed it. There we go. Okay. It smells amazing already. So now just give it a good mix and I'm going to let that simmer for about 20 minutes. So before I work on the cornbread, I know somebody will mention this. You don't have to add beans to your chili. I'm from Texas and I can't tell you how many conversations uh, that I've had with people or just heard that true Texas chili doesn't have beans in it. Uh, okay. But I have learned to love beans in my chili. Chili without beans is my absolute favorite. It's what I grew up with. But I understand adding beans to chili definitely will stretch ground meat when you are feeding a family. And I have learned to love beans. You make your chili how you like. I'm going to do what I need to do in my household and everyone will be happy. <laughs> so if you want to be judgy about beans in the chili, uh, knock yourself out. Discuss amongst yourselves. Uh, but I'm putting beans in my chili today because it's good. I like it. And that was the story of how I make homemade turkey chili. Now this pot of chili looks a bit different because I had this in the freezer and I thawed and reheated it. So it's a bit thicker and creamier. And I want to mention the, the ingredient list that I'm giving you is just a guide. Be sure to adjust the salt and seasoning to your preference. So the potatoes have baked on the oven rack for about an hour. Now, if you're using those really giant baking potatoes, the cook time is going to vary. You basically want to cook them until a chopstick can go in and come out without resistance. Then it's done. So here, I'm just going to carefully put them on my counter and I'm going to show you how I make this. By the way, that skin is, ah, it's hot. Very crispy though. So on a plate, I'm going to place one of the potatoes and I'm going to carefully open it and kind of fluff it up. I'm going to use these tongs to help. See how hot that is? Yeah. But it's so creamy and tender on the inside. It's great. And the skin is crispy. Now I'm going to add some unsalted butter. This is kind of softened. And I'm just going to mix and mash that with my fork. And now I'm adding my favorite cheese in the entire world. This is a black pepper smoked white cheddar cheese that I've shredded. And I like to put some directly on the potato while it's hot. And then I'll garnish with more on top of the chili. So here I'm just going to add some Mexican sour cream or crema. You can skip this if you don't want it. I love to mix sour cream with the potato. So just a dollop. And now I'm just going to combine this well. And the potato is still super hot, by the way. Now I'm going to ladle on my homemade turkey chili. Again, you can use ground beef chili or... You can do a can of baked beans with this same cheddar. It's so good. So right on top with the chili. And now for the shredded cheese. And you can definitely use the cheese of your choice. I just love this smoky white cheddar cheese with black peppercorn. And this is dinner. So I hope you give this recipe a try. I hope you like it. And thanks for watching.